If you are interested in getting better at TypeScript, you could do worse than attempt some of the TypeScript type challenges. These type challenges are available on GitHub, and if you take a look at the repository here, you can see we have a couple of different challenge levels that we could play around with. We've got a couple of easy ones, some medium ones, hard, and even extreme. In this video, I want to walk you through how to do one of the TypeScript type challenges, and we're going to take a look at one of the easy ones. So let's take a look at this one right here, which is named Awaited. And the way this works is, once you select your challenge, you get a quick description, and then you can take the challenge. So our description here says, if we have a type which is wrapped like a promise, how can we get the type inside the wrapped type? For example, if we have promise of example type, how do we get example type? Okay, that's a pretty straightforward problem statement. So let's click Take the Challenge. And this will take us to the TypeScript Playground. So we have the same description here, and then you can see we have a couple of test cases written down below, and then a place for us to put our code. So right now we have type my awaited equals any, and we're gonna replace this with our own type definition that solves the problem. The neat thing about these challenges is you know when you have it right because we have a bunch of test cases. So we can see that my awaited of x should equal string. And if we take a look at the definition for x, we can see that it's a promise of string. So if we're unwrapping that promise, we're going to get the string that's inside of it. This should work for more complex types. So my awaited of y equals this object, which has a field that has a value number. And we can see that the type y is a promise that returns that shape. And then finally, we have a curveball at the end here. My awaited of z should equal the union of string and number. And type z here is a promise of a promise of string or number. And so uh, this shows us that our my awaited type here needs to be able to unwrap multiple layers of promise. And we'll get to that too. So let's start creating our my awaited type. We can tell from the tests that my awaited will need to take a generic parameter. X, Y, Z in these cases are all a generic parameter. So we could call our generic parameter T. And uh, let me bump up the font size a bit for you here. So we have T, but we don't want to take just any T. We know it needs to be some type of promise. So we're going to say that t extends promise of unknown. Doesn't matter what type of promise it is or what is inside that promise, I should say. It just matters that t is a promise. And this will already give some of the correct behavior to our my awaited type. For example, if we create a new type here called a, and this is going to be um, my awaited of string, what we should see is that string is not allowed to be here because it does not satisfy the constraint of promise of unknown. However, if we change this to be a promise of string, uh, then that's okay. A is an acceptable type. Of course, it's still just an any, but now it actually works. Okay, so we have our value t here, which we know is the type that we need to operate on, if you will, uh, but we need to get inside that type. And to do that, we can use TypeScript's infer keyword. The infer keyword is always used with the extends keyword in TypeScript, and it's a great way to capture a type that we can't reference directly. It allows us to go inside one type to get access to another type. So let me show you what this means. We're going to use a conditional type here, and if you're not familiar with conditional types, know that they basically use the ternary syntax from JavaScript. So our beginning here will be t extends promise, and then we're going to say infer v. So t extends promise in this case is kind of like a Boolean expression. We want to know, does this evaluate to true or false? And here, v is going to capture the type that sits in this position in t. So if t is a promise of something, infer v says v should capture that something. Okay, so what do we want to do if t extends promise is true? Well, in that case, we now have a value for v, and so we can just assign v as our type here. Otherwise, on the other side of our ternary here, let's say never. So in whole, what this does is we capture the value inside of our promise, and if that exists, we can return our value or basically assign that value to my awaited of t. Otherwise, that is, if this is not a promise somehow, then the value is never. And as we can see right away, this has solved two of our test cases. They're now passing. My awaited of x is a string, my awaited of y is the correct object shape here. Excellent. We have one more test case though that we need to pass, and that is the nested promises, or the promise inside of a promise. 
Now, we could take the lazy approach here and just nest the same conditional statement again. Let me show you what that would look like. If we break this onto a couple of lines like this, then um, what we could do is instead of just returning v here, we can check to see if v extends promise again. So we could say um, if v extends promise and we'll infer a v2, then we can return our v2. Otherwise, we would return v as normal. Otherwise, we would return never. So if I put some parentheses here to show you what our internal conditional statement here is, just to make that a little clearer, we could see that we now can support two layers of promise here. So my awaited of z is now successfully string or number. But this doesn't completely solve the problem, right? Because let's create another type here. I'm going to copy type z, and we'll call this z2. And I'm going to nest this in another layer of promise. And then we can copy our last test here and make this z2. And we can see that this does not pass. And so if we do this, we can see that our type is kind of brittle. It doesn't support infinitely nested promises. The nice thing here, though, is that it's really not that hard to support infinitely nested promises. So we have v extends promise infer v2, right? And we're using this right now to figure out what the second level nested value is. But what if we don't care about that? Let's just say this is some unknown value. We don't care. We just want to know, is v a promise? If v is a promise, then we need some way to take the value that is inside v and pull it out. Well, that's the whole point of our my awaited type, isn't it? So what we can do is pass v to my awaited. And now we have a recursive type, a type that references itself. So no matter how many times we nest promise now, every time v is a promise, instead of some other value, we'll pass it back to my awaited. Otherwise, we know we've reached the bottom of our nested promises, and we can just return that value. So there you go. A little bit of TypeScript fun with conditional types, recursive types, and the infer keyword.